Josh, we have a special guest today. Ken is joining us from Men of Westwood. Ken, how are you doing? I'm good. How about you guys? Pretty good. Can't complain. Uh, it's a new era for UCLA football, which has uh, been an interesting couple weeks. Um, but before we get into some of that, I'm just curious, and I'm sure a lot of the uh, UCLA fans are, and just the way college football's landscape is kind of playing out here. Do you mind just telling us a little bit about Men of Westwood and what the mission is? The mission is to take care of our student athletes. So it's a new day of college athletics with NIL, uh, name, image, and likeness. So to be competitive in this new college landscape, we have to, uh, outside of the university, raise funds to help retain our players, um, our athletes, or you know, our students by giving them different opportunities in the real world, right? That they should be able to to profit off their name, image, and likeness, whether it's autographs or marketing, you know, being able to sponsor products, promote products. Um, it is not pay for play. A lot of people like to claim that it is. Um, it might be at other universities. We do not operate that way. So in order for an athlete or, you know, a student athlete to, to make his uh, NIL salary um, or payment, they actually have to do specific amounts of work. So our job is to really fundraise for that and facilitate the relationship between the student athlete and companies and corporations and individuals and donors and the fan base, um, you know, to help promote themselves and ultimately the, uh, the program that they represent. You know, so specifically here, we're, we're talking football. Gotcha. Um, and then just another question that I've been dying to ask you, um, obviously Deshaun Foster gets introduced as the new head coach for UCLA football. I guess it's been about a week or so now. Um, and one of the first things he says during his press conference is, Hey, I got some meetings, uh, the very next day to get going on NIL and everything else that, you know, a lot of fans have been kind of asking for. Um, there was the picture, I believe of you meeting with Deshaun Foster, um, how was that meeting with him and, and what has the relationship been like uh, with Deshaun even prior to this? Because I know um, obviously him being an alum and being on campus as a coach for, for some time now, um, he, he's no stranger to UCLA. Yeah, I've known Deshaun for, for a while being just based as a, as a fan and a donor being around the program. Um, obviously, when we started uh, Men of Westwood for basketball and football, there was an, you know another layer of my relationship. So the the coaching staff from last year obviously knew me from you know from three different hats if you want to put it like that um so i've had a great relationship with deshaun i couldn't be more excited that we have one of our own uh who understands the landscape understands what it means to be a player at ucla what those expectations are in and out of the classroom um so from that you know level i've always had a great relationship with deshaun our first meeting, you know, I'm not going to go into details on, on what we discussed, obviously, sure. um, but it's a breath of fresh air, or as I made the joke, you know, there's a, there's a, my shoulders feel a little lighter today. Um, <laughs> it, you know, the, I'm not pushing 10 boulders up a mountain. Um, <laughs> but, that, you know, that, that being said, I, I think our fan base should be very excited for Deshaun, not, you know, not because of NIL, because God knows none of us know where this is going, how it's going to evolve, what it's going to be, you know, tomorrow, the next day, a year from now. Um, but Deshaun is a, is, is a guy who really just wants to win. He wants, he wants to win at his alma mater. He wants to make it, you know, bring back the, the proudness and the traditions and, and just the, the fact that people can go on a Sunday and put on their, their four letters, you know, to go to the, to go have breakfast or go to have lunch or, or, you know, go shopping um, and wear it with pride. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't want to just focus in on what he's going to do for NIL because he'll, he'll be great with everything because he's going to bring that, that energy and that, that passion of being a Bruin, which has been sorely, you know, sorely lacked for, for a while now. Go ahead, Josh. I mean, NIL has been, I mean, the wild west as far as all these different collectives and, you know, all these different brand deals that are going on. And for me, seeing as that it came at right after I was done, I mean, I don't really understand how, you know, it's worth the dynamic of how it's gone. And I mean, asking guys like how how did it how did it work for you? How is it working, you know, in certain situations because I'm not familiar with it. So how did um Man of Westwood come to be? 
Um, Men of Westwood came to be actually for basketball. So it was uh, me and some buddies who who helped me. And, uh, you know, obviously we've grown since then. But in March of 22, um, when we lost to North Carolina and Philly, we just were like, we're, we're, we're done getting on airplanes and coming back feeling lousy. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and it was it was in that moment that we kind of knew we had this this nucleus for a great basketball team. You know, we had the potential of have Jaime Hawkins as a senior, um, Tiger Campbell, you know, Jules Bernard. We had all these guys that you could see that we really had this potential for it. And if we didn't, you know, figure out a way quickly to retain that that talent, it, it's, you know, kind of starting from day one again. Um, so that's how it started. Uh, we worked with basketball basically exclusively for the first six months. Um, and then uh, Josh Rebholtz from UCLA called me one day, who, and I've, he's a dear friend, and as well as obviously the, the professional relationship we have from donor to, you know, athletic department, and said, you know, would you consider adding football into your mix? Because we need help because everything you were concerned about with basketball has the potential of happening with football. So, you know, we went there, um, we added, we added football to the mix. Uh, and we've been doing that for, you know, a better part of a year and a half now with, with both sports and also adding, you know, to the mix, cause God knows we don't have enough to do, but you know, we <laughs> added baseball, we added a different brand, which is called champion of Westwood, which really does all our Olympic sports. And we really primarily focused on women's basketball right now for that. Um, so we have different departments. We have different people who have kind of helped spearhead each individual aspect to those, uh, to those sports. Um, we have relationships with all, you know, all those players, um, you know, every, every member of the men's basketball team is signed to a deal. Every member of the women's basketball team is signed to a deal. Uh, we did not have the full football squad last year because obviously there were some influences and issues, uh, that we had getting started. Um, but by, but we, for example, gave, gave everybody something, uh, you know, we worked a deal to give everybody something that was on the bowl roster and moving forward, our plan is to have every scholarship player signed to a deal with men of Westwood. We're trying to figure out the logistics of that. Um, but that will be coming, you know, that's, uh, that's our plan, but I don't want to kind of get into that because I want Deshaun to kind of, you know, spearhead what, what he wants us to help, you know, how he wants us to help. Um, and then we also have to figure out how to, how to help the, uh, the walk-ons because, you know, Josh, you know, you, you, you were a player, you were on our squad, you, you know, mm -hmm. the walk-ons don't get the credit, but, but they're the tackling dummies for most of the day. Right. So <laughs> very, they're, very they're, they're, right. They're working really hard. <laughs> they just don't get the accolades for it. So we don't want them to feel like that there's not opportunities for their name, image, and likeness as well. So, you know, as much as I say, we've been doing football for the last year and a half, we have, but we're going to be doing it in a whole new way with a whole new thought process and a whole new support level, you know, from a week ago moving forward. So that's very exciting for us, as I said, because there's a, there's a complete buy-in and, um, you know, if, if you were to walk into the, the, you know, the basketball team, wh whether it's Mo Austin or Polly Pavilion and ask the team who Ken was, everyone would be able to explain exactly who I was football, you know, I was kind of the redheaded stepchild in a, in a dark closet and I was only allowed to be brought out for Christmas or something. Um, but you know, that being said, that's th that whole process will change. We have, we have relationships with s some great players on our team, some great student athletes, um, some great men, and they're helping, you know, bring everyone into the fold. And so it's a very exciting time for us. When you, when you're saying that um, each player is signed or has a, how exactly does that work? I'm I'm sorry. Like, so every individual player has to have a, a an agreement with yes. the man of Westwood. Correct. And so it's a is it an exclusive one, or is that why some people, not everybody, had a deal with Men of Westwood because they had their own going on, or? Uh, no. So why they didn't? That's that's you know that's a previous situation, and we, we don't need a harp on the past. Let's focus on the future. Um, so every deal that we have with student athletes is non-exclusive. Mm -hmm. We don't want, we don't feel that it's, uh, in our right 
to limit the ability of our student athletes, their right and ability to market themselves. So th we, we ask them to do certain things for, to promote the program, promote themselves, promote the university, um, work with our corporate sponsors, work with advertisers that want Ian to UCLA. But if someone has their own deal on, on the side that conflicts with one of ours, they're not required to participate in that. We would find something else for them. You know, we don't want to limit, again, I, don't, I know I sound like a broken record, but we don't want to limit their ability to do something, right? If we, if we had a deal with Coca-Cola, for, for example, and an individual player had their own deal with Pepsi, we would not make them violate mm -hmm. their deal. We would find mm -hmm. something else for them to do to earn their M NIL uh, agreement with us. Gotcha. I'm sense. glad you asked that. I'm, I'm glad you asked that, Josh, because that was actually my next question. I was kind of curious about as well. Um, but obviously, as someone who loves being on Twitter or X or whatever it's called now, um, since Deshaun Foster has been uh, hired, I've seen a lot of, <laughs> especially a lot of uh, my UCLA community there on Twitter, um, sending screenshots of their donations. A lot of people are participating more um, in the NIL for Men of Westwood. Um, what has that been like? And, and does that mean uh, you're only that much more busier now because of all the, the different uh, groups of participation that have been coming in? Oh, I need a vacation. Uh, yes. No, um, no. Yeah, we all it's it's been nonstop, but it's but it's been fun. Right. It's mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's been exhausting. There's no doubt about that. You know, it's um, but it's been so refreshing to see how the community has embraced coach. And and that being said, you know, we are seeing an influx of support from our fans, um, from our community. And that is just that's awesome. So the the lack of sleep and the you know the constant meetings and the constant conversations with people is all worth it because we're a lot closer to the light that light at the end of the tunnel than we ever were before. So you know I know that we're going in the in the right direction. Um, you know it is key for us um, whether it's us at the collective at Meta Westwood or the fans or the football program, you know, or the athletic department, whatever, we have to just continue to capitalize on this momentum. You know, we've had um, some opportunities that maybe we haven't capitalized in the past. And I'm not even talking recent past, I'm just, you know, historic. So we should learn from the past and realize that we have something here that people want to get behind. Um, and we're doing our best efforts to make sure that we keep that going, that, that we respond to everybody. And, you know, I will, I will say that if, if people have reached out to Meta Westwood and we haven't responded yet, no, it's kind of like you're at the bakery and you're in line. Um, you know, there's only so many, so many times we can get on the phone, so many times we can get on emails because there's so many of them, and that's an awesome thing. But no, we'll, we're we're getting to everybody, uh, and that's that's just exciting that people um, want to be back involved with the program. So you know, that's 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 something a weekend that we should all take pride in and understand that that we can't just let it we can't let it die here. We got to keep it going and we have to understand there's a new vision, which means we have to build a new foundation. You know, we're building a new structure, right? It's, it's no different than building a house. You have to build the foundation. That's what coach needs to do. Um, and he's got months to do it before we play our first game. And then when we play the games, regardless on the wins or losses, we have to look, you know, long-term in terms of what's the vision, what, what is he building towards, right? Coach was unfortunately, put behind an eight ball just based upon when he was hired. And that's no fault of his, you know, there, mm -hmm. there is no transfer portal right now where he can go pluck players out of, there's no recruiting window right now where he can sign players. So he has to do everything to maximize the talent he has now. Hopefully we'll be able to, to do some stuff in the April uh, transfer portal window, but mm -hmm. that's usually not a huge one anyway. So it's now it's, it's what are we doing to look towards the future, to build the recruiting base, to build the brand back up, to, you know, go into local communities and start re-recruiting them, you know, whether it's from a from a student athlete perspective or from a fan base perspective and know that, you know, the four letters are back in football and and we really want to succeed at all costs. Um, so much like myself, I find myself, you know, every time I think I'm caught up with NIL or I have it kind of maybe figured out or, or have a jump on it it changes or there's something else that comes along. What is it like for you? Um, is NIL always keeping you on your toes? And is there something that you're learning each and every year that this continues? Or um, maybe is even, or maybe is it even learning every day at this point as things continue to evolve? Oh, it's every day. 
it's a, because there's no rules that i mean there are there are some basic rules we cannot entice a player to come to a university right that's like your big one um you know we're not allowed to talk to you know student athletes before they're enrolled on campus those are you know some of like yeah. the things but in terms of that you know a player has more rights than they ever had like you know when josh when you went to school you were a bruin right like mm -hmm. you, and if you went to transfer you had to sit out these guys have the ability to to move around as much as they want you know i i equate it to the you know an ncaa quarterback has more rights than brock purdy right like they have the potential to make more you know brock purdy can't go hey i'm the i you know i'm the runner up to the super bowl but I want more money right now, or I'm going to go to the Miami Dolphins, you know, or, or the Raiders right. or wherever, just because I feel like it, like he is, they are, the, the pros are, are held to their contracts. These guys, it's, it's one year free agency. Um, nobody knows where this is going to go from a NIL perspective. You know, I, I'm hopeful that within a handful of years that it all comes in house, that it's the university's responsibility to manage it and operate it. Um, that collectives don't need necessarily have the place anymore, right? That kind of where if, if it's all in the university, you know, like the guardrails might be a little bit more, you know, again, if you think about professional to college, right? You, you hear all these rumors right now, like Ohio State's paying $13 million to, uh, to their football team. I could literally tell you right now that we're paying $1 or we're paying a billion dollars. There's, there's no checks and balances. You can't prove it one way or the other. Um, so it's a lot of, you know, people making up numbers, doing things. So it's, it's a lot harder for the coach before, again, when, when, you know, Mora recruited Woods, you know, mm -hmm. he knew that that, that was going to be a linebacker of his for X amount of years, right? The only thing he had to worry about is when he was eligible for the draft, was he talking to him about staying in school for an extra year or is he losing him to the draft the first chance he had? Now, Coach Foster has to sit back and go, every player he could lose in yeah. theory, right? Mick Cronin, every player he could lose. Um, you know, Mick, is, Mick has been very outspoken. Um, Mick is a great ally, a great help for us. And, and I know we're talking football, but to use that as an example, you know, when, when Mick goes out there and talks about NIL and says, you know, we're not in the place we need to be, it's because we're not in the place we need to be that day. Yesterday, we were in a great place. But, you know, mm -hmm. every day that, that, you know, if we just sit back and go, well, we were great last year, we're not going to succeed next year because the marketplace evolves. Players players begin to understand even the more and more value they have, you know, the more and more power they have, what they can what they can get, what they can achieve. So, you know, if someone says I gave a dollar today, I'm as as the person who's running the collective, I'm going to say thank you. You know, that's your hard earned dollar. I really appreciate it. But I'm also going to tell you, if you're willing to give a dollar tomorrow, you should think about giving a dollar and, you know, 10 cents because that extra 10% is really important because that's where it changes. So it's not that, you know, we can't succeed. We need, we will succeed, but we just need everyone to understand, right? This is the wild west and every day it's something different. And regardless on what we want and what we feel like we can raise and what we can spend, that doesn't necessarily mean that players are going to say, oh, well, Yes, uh, you know, I'll take your ten dollars, but but they're offering me thirteen, and maybe I want that. You know, maybe that extra three dollars or whatever is really worth something in their family. Um, so it's it's really it's an unchecked system. I've I've said it constantly, and I will continue to say it. It's fundamentally flawed, right? The yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you, you know the the concept here of that a a student athlete can sign a contract and not actually be held to that contract past one year is kind of insanity right like but we can't complain about it we have to we have to operate in the sandbox we were given you know so we can either be the kid in the corner kicking the sand and complaining that he doesn't have you know his shovel and pail like the other kids in the <laughs> sandbox do or we can just get our shovel and pail right and that's where we need to change we we complained about not having the shovel and pail we can have it we can get it but we can't change the model you see we're you know, Bruins are very smart individuals. We, you know, we're titans of industry, we're titans of business, and we have all these great ideas. We can't affect change right now with the NCAA. So we have to, we have to come together with our ideas on how do we make UCLA the best. If we're trying to fix the system, we're going to fail our student athletes, and we're going to fail our programs, and we're not going to be in a place where we want to be. We all want to be at the Rose Bowl on a Saturday and think, you know, going into the stadium going, 
we're going to win today, not we're, we're operating at a deficit because we don't have this and that because it's not fair that they had it. No, it's fair. Mm -hmm. They played, they played under the guidelines that everybody else is. We sat here and complained about the guidelines. So, you know, I've already seen the shifts of change in our community, with our fans, with our donors, with our programs. And again, that goes back to the capitalization. We need to capitalize on this momentum because if we don't, we're going to be back to where we were. Go ahead, Josh. All the things you're saying is like, man, it's so tough, like the landscape of college football now. Because like you said, when I was getting recruited, majority of the time, if, if you transferred, it was kind of frowned upon. And, and the guys that transfer usually were guys that weren't playing. And nowadays, it's your starters that you have to worry about. I mean, across across the country, all the coaches are every year have to recruit in-house as much as they're recruiting, you know, outside. And um, one of the things that we always harp on on here is like the fact that fans are always, you know, seems to be complaining about, you know, how the program is doing this and that. But at the same time, what are you doing to help? You know, people are complaining about the attendance issues and people weren't showing up to games. So like now with this NIL, you can't complain about the success of the team if you're not contributing to it. You know, and I think this conversation is really important because, you know, we're getting inside information of, you know, how the collectors work, you know, what what's going on. Because like you said, it's Wild West and maybe a typical fan doesn't really understand the landscape or how things are working out. And it's just like this mysterious NIL and these all these collectives. And like I don't know. Um, how to contribute or um, where to give money to or how it's going to help the team and, and this and that. So, I mean, one of the biggest things going to Big Ten is just like like we said, is is helping and contributing because all the people that wanted the old coach gone, he's gone. And, you know, we have Coach Foster now. And like we say is you can't complain next year about how the team's doing if you didn't help, you know, a year ago or now it's it's you know what i'm saying and i feel like that's been a repetitive thing with the bruins in the past few years it's like so many voices and people think that that you know you know that's just the way with social media now is like everybody feels like they have a platform to complain and you know have all these opinions but your opinion like i said your opinion doesn't really matter if you're not helping and contributing so um i would say what would your pitch be or not your pitch but like how can you know all the alumni and, and the Bruins help today, like contributing uh, to. Yeah, well, no. Yeah, no. First of all, thank you for what you just said, because you're spot on, right? Like this, we're, we're in a position we're in because of the last few years and people saying, I'm not going to help. And now, you know, you can't blame Coach Foster next year. This isn't of his doing, right? We have to, you have to be looking down the road and planning, you know, for the future. Um, you know, the easiest way is go to benofwestwood.com, right? Like, the you go there there's you can give donations we have experiences because we're able to to utilize the student athletes so you know you can you can pay to have dinner with a with a student you know with a player um you you can get a tour of the Wasserman Center you can um you know have you, a student athlete promote your product you know you can there's so many different things we can do now with that but get to you know you can get to know these kids and it's really under you know it's I don't want to understate that, like get to know a player, get to know the program because we don't have guys who are earning their NIL and, you know, driving, you know, going out and buying Rolls Royces and just wasting their money that way. They're taking care of family. You know, we had a bunch of NIL deals, which we do and we currently do, which really it is them saying to us, we would just want to be able to make sure mom and dad can travel and go to all the games. You know, it's a lot different now that we're not playing Stanford or Berkeley, where it's an easy drive up the coast, you know, it might be a long drive, but it's an easy drive versus, you mm -hmm. know, going to Penn state for a game is not cheap, right? There's, there's limited hotels, there's limited flights. You got to drive in like so on and so forth. So they're using it to just, you know, make sure that the ability is there for them to have their loved ones, their friends, their family with them. So they can help do something to make, you know, moms and dads Christmas a little bit better because moms and dads sacrifice so much, for them to get them to this point. You know, Josh, again, I, I don't need to tell you this. You played football. Football is the really the one sport, unlike, you know, basketball, really, right? Like if we take our two major sports, basketball, you're the the guy who can't who doesn't make the NBA has about can play on this planet in multiple leagues. If you don't make the NFL, you're probably not playing football anymore. You're not earning a wage playing the game you love. So those are kinds of things where, you know, these guys understand that their career really is on an egg timer, right? 
an injury in football is more catastrophic than one in other sports because of the ability to come back and the, just the pressure that it's put on your body. So a lot of our student athletes really want to just make sure that, that, that they can have people come and watch the games, right? That they can make sure that, that they have something so they can, you know, get their girlfriend a gift that they can buy, you know, treat mom to something. And, and when you hear these stories, it's really impressive to hear what these young men are doing, you know, they're not just wasting monies or being flashy. And you can see that across the landscape that other guys are doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, people are staying in college longer because NIL has afforded them that opportunity that the NFL can't, right? You have a, I mean, look at this last year, you know, the best two teams in the Pac-12 had, you know, grad students playing quarterback in Bo Nix and Michael, you yeah. know, and Michael Penix. Mm -hmm. In five, 10 years ago, there's no way you would have had a fifth or a six year quarterback still in the NFL, you know, in the NCAA if they ever wanted to play in the NFL, right? You had Dylan Gabriel transfer to another, to, to Oregon this year. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, his NIL, I'd, I'd almost be willing to bet is more than he'd make if he went to the draft this year. Like, so guys are using this to maximize their, their earning potential and they're being smart about it. And so, you know, I ask our fans to, to, to understand that and help them and utilize them, right? You, we're not paying to play. If you want to, you know, if you're, if you're a business and you want to use a student athlete to promote it, they have to promote it. They don't get paid if they don't do the work. That's, you know, the simple thing. We are not in the business of pay to play. So, you know, it's a long winded answer, but go back, you know, go to this, go to the website, follow us on social media, you know, listen to what me and others have to say about it. Um, reach out to us, email, you know, hit us up on social media. If you have specific questions, we'll give you specific answers, you know, and we'll do our best that we can. We're not going to give you, you know, how much we've raised or how much we're paying players, um, that we might as well be handing our playbook to SC to, you know, how to beat us <laughs> off the field right. if, you know, if, if, because they can't beat us on the field. Right. Like it's like, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say this because, um, right. It's, 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 you have to understand this is the new world order. Um, there's no salary cap. The NFL knows what your salary cap is, right? Major league baseball has a salary cap. You get taxed above and beyond it. Whether, you know, if Ohio state's paying $13 million, God bless them. Right. But we don't know how that $13 million is being spent. Um, you don't want to say, you know, our quarterback is getting $1 and then someone go, Oh, it's real simple. We can give them three because we know that their budgets too. So, mm -hmm. That, understand that that's why there's, you know, there's this lack of transparency on those items. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, all of our deals have to be submitted through compliance at UCLA. So the administration does know, you know, player X is going to make Y if they do Z. Um, you know, that way we can't ever be accused of pay for play. So it's, we do have a, a place where it has to be submitted to. We're just not submitting it to the general public because again, I don't want SC or Penn State or Ohio State coming and going, oh, well, we know UCLA is doing doing that. So we're going to just we're going to we're going to throw 20 percent on. And it's and it's an easy way of of plucking their best talent. That makes sense. Gotcha. Um, uh, just real quick, as we start wrapping things up here, um, I did scroll onto the page. I was looking around. I was I was, you know, just kind of get a feel of what was being offered and whatnot. And uh, you mentioned the experiences. I believe I saw um, there might have been a few other alumni on there, but I know I think Dave Roberts was one of them in terms of experiences. Um, what is the relationship or the relationship building like to um, to have a Dave Roberts involved in, in Men of Westwood and, and have that opportunity kind of present itself for the donors? Yeah, you know, we're we're trying everything right now, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's some alums that are able to do more than others. Um, you know, some some will give dollars and some will will give themselves. Um, you mm -hmm. know, Coach Roberts is was one of those who who loved his time at UCLA, is proud to be a Bruin to this day. Um, you know, I I've, I've talked to him a few times. Uh, you know, I, he actually came out to I think it was the Colorado game we talked he's like, "Hey, look, I can do this and that." you know, with my do, giving experiences with the Dodgers and having, making it go to all the student athletes at UCLA. So he's, he's one of the first that have, have stepped up. We're, we're talking to others about doing, you know, things like that. Um, we'll, we'll try to also have potential experiences with like current players, right? It's hard for them to do things obviously during their season or during our season, cause they coincide, but you know, we're hopeful that we can have events where some of our Bruin current and ex 
players, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, any sport, come back and we have events where, where donors can touch, you know, can have touch points with them, can have communication with them. They can tell their story because um, it's a powerful one. And, and I know Josh wasn't able to capitalize on this in his time, <laughs> but I don't think that takes away, you know, that, that's just a bummer for him, but I don't think it takes away your time of being a Bruin and all that you experienced and all the competitive advantages and everything we have at UCLA. So let's not lose sight of, nice we are still the, you know, you know, the great, the greatest university in the world. Um, and we are Westwood and we have all of these things. We just need to, we need to now, you know, play in this little sandbox, as I say, that maybe we all didn't want to at one point, but that's, we don't have a choice right now. So I, I ask all the fans to please do so. And I thank all the fans from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of, of everyone at men of Westwood and champion of Westwood, we thank you for everything. And I know I speak on behalf of the student athletes and thank you. You know, last night, um, Ethan Garbers, Kane Madrano, TJ Harden and Logan Loya released a thank you video just because mm -hmm. they know how much it means. And there are, there are, you know, there are upperclassmen team leaders on, on the squad. So it, it means something to them and they're able to communicate that in the locker room. And please understand like that's, that is how we get this done. We get it done because we have great students and people and men like that, that understand what, what they have, what the value of UCLA is, and they're proud to be Bruins. So understand that that's where your hard earned dollars are going to great men like that. Awesome. No doubt about it. Uh, thank you again, Ken, so much for the, uh, for the insight and just for your time here today. It is really uh, appreciated and hopefully we can have you on here again soon down the road. I would love it. Thank you for having me. Thank you for everything you guys do for UCLA and UCLA football. Yes, um, you know, and and just keep keep the good work and and the fight up, and and we'll get it right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Always. Uh,